Hello, it's Jimmy O'Reilly. I'm looking at a Land Rover Discovery Sport XT 2 liter diesel engineum. So it's got the engine management light on and the DPF full message comes up. Okay, I'm using the launch Eurotab 3 diagnostic tool here. You can see this vehicle's got a lot of different issues. It's got a NOx exceedance code, um, which normally we can fix by filling up the AdBlue tank and cleaning off the AdBlue injector. It's got a diesel soot, partic uh, soot accumulation on the particle filter, NOx exceedance again, and we've also got a turbo undercharge, underboost fault, exhaust gas B, insufficient flow, incorrect conditions for the particle filter because of these faults. Turbo again is stuck open, actuator is stuck open. We go into the data stream and have a look at the differential pressure on the DPF. Change that to millibars or HPA. So we've got 30 on idle, which is which is high for idle. Now this vehicle, I've been told by the customer, it doesn't drive any more than maximum of three miles per day. He drives it to the station um, and then gets his train to work and then comes home. So what I normally do is um, try and flush some cleaner through the low, low pressure EGR down here. We'll take off the inlet manifold, inlet, sorry, inlet pipe and get down to the EGR down there, the high pressure EGR and uh, get that on, on, on stuck. we'll clean that out. I've just used a 7mm there to open the Jubilee clip from there and just down this end of the pipe here we've got a 10mm, we'll just get this open. So that's uh, too loose for the spanner there now so we can just undo that by hand. Back over this side we'll take off the inlet here, pull out these plastics we should be able to just lift that up and take it off. We'll take out the airbox. Just down the back down here you've got a couple of uh, more 10 mils just down there you can see it. You need to get a little wobbly extension on it. On the front of the EGR pipe here you've got two little 8mm bolts. Another one 8mm here on a little support bracket here right in the middle. Just down the back, we got the two 8 mils as well here that hold it onto the EGR itself. Just remove the coolant hoses there from it. Lose a little tiny amount of coolant, a couple of maybe a cup full of coolant, and now we can just uh, wiggle it out. So that's the whole unit there, we'll take that out and now you can get access to the EGR there. So the exhaust gas valve down here, when you command it to open, it's not it's not moving. Just gonna disconnect the plug there to see if we can work it loose. Okay, now we're going to try and open it again. You can see now it's opening. And then you can see it's a fair bit cleaner down there. Okay, so now we've put all of it back together, just the same way it came off. I'm going to open the tube here that goes to the EGR cooler. Take off the clip there and just try and give the holes a little twist. Need to be careful with this. It's on a plastic sensor. Just give it a twist left and right and hopefully just pull it out. Okay, that was quite stiff there so we just had to put a little bit of uh, lubrication on it there just to get it to come off. You don't want to break that plastic 
tube on the end of the sensor there. Use my laser pedal depressor there just to hold the revs up slightly on it. Now I'm using the launch DPF cleaner there, it's connected to the compressor. We'll connect that up to the EGR cooler holes there. We'll spray some fluid straight through while the engine's running. Do a little five second burst. Once we're finished with that, you should see some smoke coming out of the back of the vehicle. Just like that. Got the vehicle on two and a half thousand revs and what I'm doing is just I'm spraying some more of the DPF cleaner to the in intake and hopefully that, that will unstick the turbo vanes. Okay now we're gonna turn it off and let it sit for five minutes. So we've done the high pressure EGR valve the low pressure EGR cooler and intake clean through the turbo. Okay, now I'm under the vehicle, taking off a couple of the 10 mil bolts there for that bracket just to get a bit of better access up to the DPF the holes up there. And there it is, just up there. It's really hard to, uh, if, if I put my hand up to point it, then I sort of put my hand in front of the camera. So there we are, right there. We've got that disconnected. Now I've got my nozzle there attached to it. And that's it, same procedure again. We've got another bottle of fluid and we'll get that injected directly into the DPF there. Oh, I've not tightened up the bottle. All right, let's try that again. I'm just gonna get this all in in one continuous burst. So the way I like to do it is just fill the DPF completely, overwhelm it and get that fluid pushing right through the, the, the actual filter itself. You know, it's got these tiny little combs in it there. Let's get it all the way through there and uh, overwhelm it. Now we'll get soak right through everything. Uh, I think launch themselves say do like five second bursts of it, but I think my method is working a lot better for me. That is it, we are just about finished there on that. So you can see the line on the bottle there. Once you get, use half the bottle into the cup and then you can re refill the other half with some water. Okay, that's the DPF done. I'm gonna move over to the AdBlue injector over here. We're gonna take that off and make sure it's clean. So I'm using a quarter inch ratchet, got a size four hex there on a swivel just to get onto it. I'm gonna spray it up again with some, uh, some cleaner and then some fluid some uh, lubricant and yeah, we'll let that sizzle in there for a minute let's get all that ash out of there I'm not sure if you can see the port there but you can see how blocked that is completely blocked up with ash you can see that's some of the stuff that came out there we've just poked that in the hole there to get it all cleaned out and we've used a a little small pick there that we're using. Lumps and lumps of that. Okay, now we're back inside. We're going to start the vehicle up. Hold that up to around about 3,000 RPM. And we shall... Let's hold that steady. Sorry. Just gotta watch that pressure come down there to a suitable range. 
can normally get these down to around 50 or 60. And uh, it was on 30 at idle, so we want that sort of close to zero as possible. Under 10, anything under 10 should be fine. It looks like it's sort of flattened out there, so we'll let go of the accelerator. And we have zero pressure. So I said zero pressure there on the DPF, you can't ask for any better than that. Now to get rid of that DPF sign, we need to tell it that it's been cleaned or had a new one, so we'll do that now. Come back here to special functions, uh, common, exhaust emissions. Reset. No, this is not the right one. We'll need to do that as well. Anyway, because this is for the uh, AdBlue. I'm sure we had AdBlue false there. So we need to look for the DPF. Where is it? We'll do an AdBlue set now anyway. Turn the ignition off and then back on. Switch the ignition off. That's successful. So now we've got the low pressure EGR adaption. We'll do that. And that's successful. Just calculating the add blue level. So it's got 9 litres in there, we need to put another 5 litres in to refill it. So we're filling it up now with 5 litres there, directly in there. Okay, we've got 0.6 of a litre left, so we'll top that up again. It's a bit strange, I've done probably over 100 of these Discovery Sports, but I can't seem to find the uh, particle filter, you know, replace the particle filter. Uh, so it looks like we've only got the option to do a dynamic regeneration, unfortunately. But it, because, the, because the level is so low, it's not going to be a proper forced regeneration. It's just going to be maybe a couple of miles down the road. It'll say, yeah, the pressure's good enough. Turn around and stop the engine. Oh, no, it's still saying that. Can I, can it, it must be replaced, but we're trying to replace it. Let me. It must be, there must be an option somewhere. Okay, we managed to do that. So that's reset there. Then we'll go back into the ECM, make sure that we haven't got any codes. We've got no DCCs there. We'll take it now on a test drive. check the codes it's all clear that's it it's all done on that one that's it we'll see you in the next video